In order for us to understand why some molecules or parts of molecules will act as hydrophobic molecules, meaning that they will repel or fear water, and other molecules that are hydrophilic or they attract or love water, of course we need to understand or learn a little bit more about the structure of this molecule, water. And even though you might think this is a very simple molecule to study in terms of the number of atoms and uh, the, how, the structure, the actual physical and chemical structure of this, this molecule, it plays a great or a very important role in biological systems. This simple molecule that you see here, my very interesting drawing here, what I want to illustrate here is that water is comprised, as you probably know, of two hydrogen atoms and they're both bound to this oxygen, this large oxygen here. What happens, and it's very important to know, is that oxygen has high electronegativity, meaning that it's able to attract electrons to its core, let's say. And for that reason, you will find around this area here, around the oxygen, a negative charge. S leaving these two hydrogens here with less negativity due to the fact that the electrons are being pulled towards the oxygen, and therefore you're going to end up with a positive charge. And for this reason, water is then a polar molecule. And this is key. This is a very important thing to know and to learn, especially if we want to talk about hydrophobic versus hydrophilic molecules. Because this is what's going to define whether a molecule will be will repel or will be repelled from water or will be attracted or attract water. Because the, these interactions depend on these charges here. Just think about a magnet, think about a pole. So these will attract similar or opposite. So this area here, the negative area of water, this region here, will attract positive charges of other molecules. And this positive side here, the hydrogens, will be able to attract negative parts of other molecules. And this is where you define, you define the, the relationships between water and other molecules. Now let's have a look at the molecules that fear water, hydrophobic molecules. These molecules are definitely nonpolar. As I mentioned previously, water has defined poles, meaning a positive and negative charge defined by the oxygen and the two hydrogens being positive. And hydrophobic molecules do not have defined charges. They're nonpolar. Some examples of these molecules are usually carbon-rich molecules that for the fact that these molecules have well distributed electrons, so the electrons are well distributed here or equally distributed in this molecule, it ends up not having any charge at all. So no defined positive and negative charge. And as you know, negative attracts positive and positive attracts negative. And if this molecule doesn't have either, what will happen then is that it will not interact with water. And that's why we call it hydrophobic. Now, similar molecules interact with one another. So hydrophobic molecules will interact with neutral molecules or nonpolar solvents. And they do form clusters in water Say if you drop some oil in water, you will see that there are some 
some clusters or some drops there. They're called micelles. It's very common. Uh, structure formed by hydrophobic molecules when they interact with water. And also one popular experiment that you can do it in your kitchen is when you try to mix oil, say if you have olive oil or any type of oil in your house, with water, this is what's bound to happen. So no mixing why? Because oil is quite rich in this structure that I just drew here, has lots of carbons with well distributed or equally distributed electrons, therefore the molecules are quite hydrophobic, for that reason will not mix with water. And you can see clearly here in this image, and you can try it at home. It's not going to explode or anything bad will happen. So you can definitely try this at home. Another thing that I would like to mention about hydrophobic molecules are examples. And we have alkanes, which are molecules that are rich in these uh, carbon chains, and they're saturated chains, meaning that all the carbons have are forming bonds with other atoms, mainly hydrogen atoms. Another thing that, you, another example of hydrophobic molecules are oils and, of course, fats. One thing that I would like to also add is that they, some of these molecules are also called lipophilic, and again, with word origin, fat or lipo means fat, and philic means love. And of course, they're hydrophobic, they hate water or they fear water, but they do love fat because fat are hydrophobic molecules. So they interact with similar molecules. And while hydrophobic substances are usually lipophilic, there are exceptions. And these exceptions are silicones and fluorocarbons. So now it's time to talk about the molecules that love or interact very well with water. And in order for this to happen, you they have to be polar, meaning that they will have defined negative and positive charges. And in this way, they're able to interact with the same well-defined negative and positive charges of the water molecule. So this is a lesson to take home is that hydrophobic molecules interact very well with nonpolar molecules or similar molecules and hydrophilic or polar molecules are going to be able to interact well with other polar substances like water and of course other substances that you might find in the environment. Another thing that I would like to mention and is stated here as the third point, but I would like to use the space and this time to try to explain why these hydrophilic molecules usually are capable of forming hydrogen bonds. Because as I mentioned previously, again, with the structure of water, water has two hydrogen atoms, and this is the side of the molecule, let's say, that is positively charged, and of course you have the oxygen, which is negatively charged. And if water meets with another molecule that also has a negative charge, say another oxygen here, what's going to happen is this oxygen will interact with the positive side here of water and form what we call a hydrogen bond. These are very important, very famous uh, bonds formed between uh, molecules and very, very important in biological systems. And you, of course, you're going to touch this in either biology or organic chemistry, biochemistry, even in medical school. This is a very, very uh, important type of bond. Now, touching on the examples 
of uh, hydrophilic molecules. The first one it, that I would like to give you is salts. If you think about table salt, very simple example. Today I'm using the kitchen as <laughs> for my examples. So table salt, sodium chloride, when it interacts with water, will split into the into its ions, a positively charged uh, sodium and a negatively charged chlor uh, chloride. Uh, and what's going to happen is that these charges will then interact with the charges of the water molecule. And that's why it's considered a hydrophilic molecule. And also sugars. Uh, sugars is very, uh, they're usually hydrophilic. And if you take a tablespoon, again with your kitchen, um, take a tablespoon of sugar, mix it in water, and you're going to see it disappear or dissolve in water. Why? Because it's also a hydrophilic molecule and interacts very well with, uh, the, with water. Now, the last point that I would like to make, and it's very quick because you can go into a little bit more detail, and I suggest you have a look in the, either in your chemistry notes, or we might touch it uh, on a different uh, tutorial, is that some hydrophilic substances do not dissolve in water. And for that reason, they, uh, this type of mixture is called a colloid mixture.